Just look at it all. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is an expansive reimagining of a classic, full of involved side quests and many, many mini games. But just how long is it? Well, we're here to let you know exactly how many hours it took different members of the IGN team to finish the story, and what they prioritised doing with their time. I'm waiting, Cloud. It took me just over 58 hours to reach the end of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth's story. I made sure to explore each of the game's many regions along my journey, but by no means in a completionist manner, with only around a quarter of the side activities finished. This included all of Tifa's optional quests, as I knew exactly who I wanted to spend an evening with at the Gold Saucer, so built up that bond accordingly. Nothing could quite match the allure of Queen's Blood though, as I took every opportunity to sink time into the surprisingly deep card combat mini game whenever an opponent appeared. Not only is it a really fun deck builder, but also packs its own dark storyline that reveals itself the more you play. Overall, I felt like I hit a good balance between side and main activities on my playthrough, as the relationships I forged with each of Cloud's ever-growing party resulted in the story's big moments hitting even harder. I intend to go back to Junon, Cosmo Canyon and beyond soon, but only after giving my thumbs a few days rest from its fantastic yet frantic action. Keep it away from me! I blasted through my playthrough of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth in a brisk 33 hours, rarely stopping to smell the desert roses. I'm a huge fan of the 1997 original, so my goal from the start was not only to see how they faithfully recreated all the moments I love, but also what they changed. And no amount of mini games or side quests thrown in my way was going to stop me from getting those answers as fast as possible. So I wasn't hideously underleveled, my general rule of thumb was to tackle everything in front of me during the critical path. So it's not like I bypassed the world completely, I just never went out of my way to hunt down the countless amount of extra activities. After finishing the game, I returned back to the world and then began exploring side quests, mini games, and hunting down world intel. I was also determined to see all the other dates Cloud can go on at the Gold Saucer, and I've easily sank another 20 hours in so far, levelling up all my character relationships and exploring all the nooks and crannies Final Fantasy VII Rebirth has to offer. As a Final Fantasy VII obsessive, I didn't just stop and smell the roses. I admired them up close, from afar, and pondered how I could puree them into artisanal ice cream. By the time I rolled credits on Rebirth, I had poured 89 hours and 28 minutes into the game. I was systematic about the whole thing. I'd clear out all the side quests of each respective town, followed by 100%ing each region. But clearing out each region was actually only a side effect of wanting to track down all the optional monster hunts and proto-relic side quests because those are the coolest things in the game apart from the whole story and all that. I also became obsessed with Queen's Blood, making sure to find and devour each and every player and challenge the game could throw at me. But despite my nearly 90 hours, I still didn't 100% the game. Later on in Rebirth, you unlock a collectibles museum that you can grind out mini games and I'm assuming Chadley's battle simulator missions to help fill out. But no way was I gonna do that and play through one. Maybe when I go back through on hard, but rest assured, I will be back for seconds and maybe even thirds on PC, whenever that inevitably happens. Why come back now? After five years. My time with Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is a little unique in that I played it with the intention of guide creation, and thus spent a lot of time grinding the toughest summon bosses at their hardest difficulties for the sake of trying to understand and better explain their mechanics. As a result, I spent a total of 97 hours and 45 minutes on my playthrough. Like Nick, I was fairly systematic in 100%ing the world intel of each region, though there are still several odd jobs that I need to go back and complete, and mini games that I've yet to complete at their hardest difficulties to claim their greatest rewards. I want to make it clear that this is a rarity for me. I almost never spend time trying to 100% regions in an open world game, but I found that it was uniquely compelling in Rebirth thanks to the way it smartly ties its world intel activities to both memorable experiences and worthwhile rewards. I wanted to find the life springs so I could fight that region's unique and challenging enemy, 
I wanted to complete all the combat challenges to unlock new battles in the combat simulator. I wanted to find the crystals to power up my summons. I wanted to find all the proto relics to see where its goofy story would ultimately end up. And I wanted to find all the excavation sites so that I wouldn't fall behind on my item transmutations. Even beyond the handful of side quests that I still have to pick up, I've still got more Queen's Blood to play, hard mode to test my skills against, and chocobo races to win. In short, this game is absolutely massive. Three, you, yet. By the time credits rolled, I had spent 60 hours and 32 minutes playing Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I imagine this will be a pretty typical playtime for most people, as while it's far from 100% complete, those hours allowed for a healthy mix of story and optional content. I completed a few side quests in each of the open zones, as well as plenty of world intel activities, the quick hit tasks that provide some easy variety. I also made sure to put focus on collecting every one of the iconic summons, and so by the time I hit the final boss, I had a full team of magical gods to back me up when I was in need. Crucially, doing that amount of optional content meant that I was always at exactly the suggested level for the main storyline, and so there was never a point where I struggled to get past a boss or I was forced to grind for XP. But since I only did between 30 and 50% of what's on offer in each area, it means I have plenty more to discover at my own pace now I've finished the story. In fact, I probably have a whole game's worth of side quests, activities, and mini games left to play. And with gameplay this good, especially when it comes to the combat and the design of its open world hubs, I can absolutely guarantee you that I'll be back for more. For more from Rebirth, check out our review, and for everything else Final Fantasy, stick with IGN.